All right, look at this tweet. This is how many people did the 100 days of code challenge by Replit in 2023. And this is probably the worst retention graphs out there. Around 2.3 million people started and less than 5% were able to finish the challenge. The retention was so bad that even Elon Musk was wowed by it. Why am I talking about this? In a video that is titled Fastest Way to Become a Software Developer in 2024. The reason is that the fastest way to become a software developer is to avoid this drop off. The biggest mistake that you can do as a beginner is drop off early in your journey. And in this video, I'll talk about all the points that I feel can lead to higher retention when it comes to following coding or following a course. Let's get right into it. All right, let's kick things off by looking at the graph. What is this 5% doing right? And I think the answer is that this 5% is not focused on day zero outcomes. They're looking at a very long road to create tech as their career. There's a saying that says, humans overestimate what they can do in a day, but underestimate what they can do in a decade. What this means is that we feel like we'll be able to complete web development in a day, but we never feel like we'll be able to become senior engineer in the next 10 years. We underestimate how far we can go in the next 10 years. And I think what these 5% are doing right is that they're really focusing on the longer goal. They're focusing on slow growth and in the end, Slow growth is the thing that retains very well. You might be able to luck into a job randomly, but unless you've paid your debt, unless you've spent a lot of time honing your skills, uh, your growth will top out really quickly in that job. So the first thing that you can do is take a longer term horizon in this journey of yours. Tech anyways runs in cycles, you'll see bulls and bears. Be prepared for this long journey that's ahead and don't focus too much on the next week's outcome. Maybe focus on a year worth of outcome, how far you can go in the next one year. With that, let's move to the second point, which is a little more actionable. The point is called grabbing the unfair advantage in tech. What this means is that there are a few bets that you can take, a few things that you can do that will force you to stay in tech. You will not necessarily procrastinate if you take these bets. A few of these include either getting a CS degree because you'll be forced to take classes that you will almost 100% procrastinate through if you're not in CS. Some of the examples include DBMS, operating systems, computer networks. And even though they don't have a direct impact on your journey, they teach you a lot of jargon that make practical coding much easier compared to someone who's not done a CS degree. So if you have the choice, get a CS degree. Number two, get grandfathered into a company. If you have a brother who's the founder of a company, if you have a friend, let them in your company as an intern. Uh, of course, don't work for free. At a very humble salary, try to get into the company and understand the code base. The best thing you can do early in your career is understand how things are happening in the industry. And for that, you can either get grandfathered in or you can underprice yourself really heavily to get that first internship offer. That takes me to the third point, which is scrappy is good. In the end, tech is run by businesses. And as businesses grow and scale, they need extremely good code practices all around. But early in your career, scrappy is good. A good example here is Levels.io, who's built multiple pseudo million dollar businesses and his complete stack is PHP. Uh, he pushes his code directly to master. He pulls them on a server. I think he has a single server running. He has the scrappiest stack out there. Yet he has one of the most successful running, you know, indie businesses in the world. Why? Because in the end, people want outcomes. People want K code does a certain thing. And you as the learner will most probably drop off really bad if I ask you to write code in Rust on day zero. However, if I give you a problem statement and don't necessarily force a stack on you, you might be able to figure out a scrappy way to build it. And that's how you incrementally get over the curve and avoid drop off. The first time you write a full stack application end to end yourself is when that flywheel begins, is when you start to like the field a little bit more. This happened for me uh, almost six months into my coding journey. So try to look for that first win and it does not have to be the fanciest code base out there. It can be scrappy. It needs to have an outcome. For me, it was building a multiplayer game, uh, specifically a multiplayer version of Flappy Bird. Fourth point. To get a job, uh, hard work plus smart work is key. Here is another tweet. It says, the number one thing I look out for when hiring in people is FIO, figure it out. Um, you can get pretty damn far by being just resourceful, reliable, and result oriented. In the end, in a remote job, no one is tracking you at least today. There's no way for them to figure out if you're really smart or if you, know, you have an AI assistant that's really smart. Um, so no one cares how you arrived at the solution as long as you're being result oriented. If you understand the business priorities well, if you write code that is acceptable given the current code standards of the company, and if you're being reliable, I think that's the quality that founders are chasing the most right now. Anyone can be a software developer eventually. The thing that differentiates you is how hardworking you are and how reliable you are. If you can be that guy who the founder looks up to whenever a problem goes down, is when your job is sorted. So if you want to take one thing from this point, it is be incredibly reliable, uh, especially during your initial three months of 
programming because what happens when you join a company is that for the first three months you're sort of looked down upon a lot as in people are tracking to see where you stand in the company and then if you're performing really well for the first three months that first impression sticks it sticks the other way around as well and then whatever the first impression is it's very hard to break it usually which is why the suggestion is if you're if you've had a bad quarter if your initial impression isn't great you should switch the company because no matter how well you perform after that it's very hard to break that initial impression so at least during the first three months and preferably throughout your journey in a company be extremely resourceful be extremely reliable make sure you're providing more value than you're charging for next point run towards saturation as a beginner as a beginner there are a thousand things that everyone around you is doing some examples include creating readme contributions don't do that doing data such as an algorithm trying to contribute to open source trying gsoc i get that there are a lot of people flocking and you know trying to do these things but that's the bare minimum right if you're a beginner try to pay your debts and you know figure out the data structure and algorithms make sure you're doing whatever 300 400 problems everyone is and have that bare minimum metric that everyone in the country currently has a uh, the reason for this is you know it feels very flashy to you know directly aim for a 100k remote offer but unfortunately everything happens in stages um, and that includes doing data structures and algorithms once make sure you are paying your debt and have the standard things under your belt because unfortunately hiring isn't very optimal if dsa is a metric dsa is a metric if an e-commerce project on a resume looks good it looks good so whatever is the alpha that's going around if people are doing open source contributions try to do those if people are getting into gsoc try aiming for gsoc if people are doing dsa make sure you're doing dsa make sure you have all of these corners covered before you start applying for a company next point rejection is part of tech especially today make sure you're building the muscle that prepares you for a lot of rejections it happens with everyone including me the only advice i can give here is unless you get kicked back you won't be able to go back up so make sure you're not letting any rejections affect you the one thing i would like to advise here is uh, be prepared for that interview there might be a thousand rejections that you get purely based on your resume but once you get that interview you should be able to nail everything the problem with tech is that people defer interview preparation until the very last minute and i feel interviews are something you shouldn't even prepare for it's your journey over the last few years that prepares you for that one day you can't really hack the system and you know buy an interview preparation boot camp for one week and prepare for your interview it is also extremely anxiety inducing to do that so uh, make sure once you get an interview offer you're able to nail it that will only happen if you're consistent over the last few years there's a lot of years of experience that's been honed in that you just spit out in an interview so the worst thing you can do is that you got an interview but got rejected make sure when that day comes and it will if you're going to stick through tech for a long time it could be for a 50 lakh offer could be for a 10 lakh offer does not matter as long as you price yourself somewhere on the curve you will get an interview and then when you do get an interview make sure you're over impressing that will only happen if you're practicing coding a lot if you're spending your time coding as you would in a company so make sure you don't defer interview preparation make sure you're coding the right things from not day 0 but eventually before your interview you should have spent at least a few weeks if not months writing good scalable back end or front end or full stack or whatever company you're applying for code so that when you get that interview you're not fumbling with anxiety and it's a chill process for you to go through the interview i think the worst thing you can do is give an interview with a lot of anxiety around what questions they'll ask me and last point motivation helps that's why i make these videos from time to time and that's also why there's a montage at the end of this video watch social network uh, look at an accomplished senior of yours um, i think at least initially you need a lot of motivation to stay in tech to code to you know have more motivation other than money and you know getting a job for that i have a bunch of documentaries i'm happy to link in the description documentaries around how bitcoin works how there was a bitcoin millionaire slash billionaire a few years ago these are the things that i watched initially that gave me a lot of motivation to you know pursue a cs degree over something else i could have gone to a better college in like a mechanical degree but i ended up choosing cs because i really wanted to be that hacker on a computer and today i have like the fanciest setup over here in the end all of this does not matter uh, you are writing code that does like dumb, the dumbest thing if you're in amazon you're, you're writing code for a very small button but at least initially to be able to think okay, you can eventually you know be the person who's mining bitcoin in 2013 or be the person who creates the next social network um it leads to a lot of motivation which is good when you're just starting your journey so that's all i had for this video the takeaways are have extremely high motivation do this for a really long time interviews aren't something you should be preparing for have a senior a friend who can grandfather you into a company or you know underprice yourself really bad and understand how code is being written in the industry write that code yourself and then eventually wait for that offer underprice overprice yourself on the curve so that's at least you're able to get that interview 
once you get the interview as long as you've been doing all the things that i've talked about it should be easy to nail is what i think with that let's end it i'll see you guys in the next one bye bye man sacha soch uchi mehnat vi hove jehda us bande di tarakki phata phat hundi aa faide wali kal dassa kadd sare hal dassa sach de te peed sada kat hundi aa ho ajj ni je hunda ta o kal ho jave sabran na sab kuj hal ho jave haar da ni jehda haar jaan wale dar kol onu hi ta jitne da wal ho jave मिलती परोसी नहीं हो कामयाबी थाल पेल पेला औकड़ा भी पेश हों आपे बंद सिख जाता खा खा के ठोकर जी ठोकर बदाम तेज हों हौली हौली हासिल मुकाम हों हौली हौली मेहनत ना नाम हों पेला पेला हर बंद आम हों दुनियादारी चो जो तराश बन दे अपने ते रख विश्वास बन दे आम जह मुंडे भी ने खास बन दे आम जह मुंडे भी ने खास बन दे हो आम जह मुंडे भी ने इब आम नहीं है छोरे बदनाम थे जो छोरे बड़ा नाम हो गए छोरे गुम नाम थे जो छोरे ना